Howdy from Arlington, Texas, y'all. I hope this video finds you well. So, I don't know about everybody else, but when I uh, when I go to look at videos, you know, I've got all my subscriptions, and I figure out which ones I want to put into my watch list. I obviously read the title now as much as any time because I'm pretty much skipping over anything that says Project 2020, even from folks whose channels I've found to pretty much be much wa must watch YouTube. Um, so if you read mine, uh, you see fatigued mail day. So I haven't made a lot of videos. I haven't made any mail day Monday videos in a bit. So I'm going to do a show off some of the stuff that I have gotten in the mail recently and a channel recess. So this will definitely be my last video for the foreseeable future. Um, some of you that some of you follow me on Twitter and on my Beans B Card blog handle and you may have seen or noticed that I either seen that I said I was gonna kinda leave that for a while or have just noticed you haven't seen a lot. Uh and you would see a lot because I was sharing everyone's videos over there, or a lot of the videos over there. But, yeah, I've already made that, and I've moved to my personal account, and it's already helped uh, help make me feel a little bit better. So, pretty happy with that decision. Uh, there's just a lot going on that I'm just, you know, just makes me unhappy. I'm not happy with, and... You know, Project 2020 is one of them. I'm so tired of hearing about freaking Project 2020. I'm just over it. Uh, I muted it on the one, on the one Twitter. I'm gonna still got to get that done on my personal account, but it's that and just a lot of other things that I'm just not gonna discuss in details. Um, it just has me real jaded right now. You know, our hobbies are a reflection of our society in a lot of ways, and. As it applies to this, one example of that is groupthink. And that's something that I don't fall in line with. I've never thought that. I, I think independently, you know, if we, you know, don't like to talk politics here, but, you know, typically somebody identifies with one side or the other and they pretty much just follow that line. I'm not that guy. I, I, I see the I see the positives and negatives on both sides. Um so yeah, I just don't fall in line with that. I'm an independent thinker and you know, I've always I've just always been like that and I always will be and that's not accepted by the masses um and that be in whatever area of life you want to talk about. Um yeah, but yeah, I just don't see a lot of things or don't like a lot of the things I'm seeing in the hobby and where it's headed. If that makes me a boomer, a uh, curmudgeon, a uh, hey you kids get off my lawn guy, then that's what I am. But, you know, it is what it is. It's just a hobby. So if it's not making my life better, you know, if it's bringing me down, um, you know, it's it's time to go. And for the time being, it's definitely a, uh, a, t a time to go and a time to make some changes for myself but with all that out of the way let's finish on a positive with some mail over the last couple weeks I've received a little bit more than this but I'm just going to show some highlights uh, I'm not trying to make a super long video so um, picked up some cards from my buddy Anson at pre-war cards uh, a couple of T210s so you may or may not know the T210s came out right about the same time as the T206s. They're, a 19, they're listed as a 1910 set, but they are minor leagues. Um, mostly common players. Uh, there's a Casey Stengel and a Joe Jackson that are the most two valuable cards in the set. But for me, now being in Texas, I am working on the Fort Worth team set. I live in Arlington, which is between Dallas and Fort Worth, and I definitely identify with Fort Worth and I'm not a big fan of Dallas as far as a city, but you'll see this one is a Dallas one. I actually have a copy of this one. This is a uh, Megger is his name. 
but I'm always up for having spares of these for the days that, you know, there are a lot of type collectors out there. And I've purchased from type collectors, but then they have to go back and buy another card for their type collection. So it's nice to kind of have a couple of these. I'll probably actually keep this one over the other copy I have. I love that little punch out. I'd love to see if uh, I can find some more of those uh, down the road. It's one of those things to me I'm fascinated by back stamps. So this, uh, like I said, I, I guess I'm passively working on Dallas just because I'm here right now. I'm working on Fort Worth and Galveston because Galveston is uh, my wife and I's uh, vacation happy place. And then this one is a Waco player, uh, Doogie, Doogie something like that so again it's very cool to have it was an excess card for Anson that he didn't need that he wanted to sell and just pass along not because he needed money but just pass along to some people that might appreciate him a little bit more and I definitely will so also as a part of that order you've seen these cards I mean I figure if you're watching my channel you probably watch Bard's channel he picked up a couple of these also recently so these are a yalo it's a car it was a card game so there's an offensive and defensive card i don't know a ton about it i read anson's article on it but what got me and what made me interested was that it's believed that red grange is the player imaged even though it doesn't have his name or anything on it he was vice president of the company that let this you know produce this and it's also in university of illinois colors which is where he played. So, you know, I have a Red Grange uh, 1955 All American, and on my uh, list of cards I want to pick up in the not too distant future is a. Uh, I'd like to see if I can come into a Red Grange Sport Kings, but with prices going ridiculous right now, may have to put a little bit of a pause on that until um, hopefully it comes back down to earth a little bit. And he threw this play ball in. I don't even know 100% what year it is. But what was super cool to me was that he was born in Birmingham, Alabama, which is where I was born. So pure happenstance. Uh, definitely a cool little card to have in my collection. Definitely the first play ball card that I have ever owned. So tie this up real quick. Some loose ends. So I picked this up. Oops. How do we get this thing off here? Boom. So really just picked this up. It was a I thought it was cool because it's a phone card. It's graded for you know, I've slowly started picking up some Dale Earnhardt slab cards, great both graded and authenticated. It was a nine and I got this thing for I think it was five bucks delivered. I think it was an I think it was a ninety nine cent auction that I got for ninety nine cents and I think it was four dollars shipping. So five dollars delivered to my to my door. I thought it was pretty cool. Unscratched, all that, and like I said, and it's a nine, so cool little addition. So um, these two I had seen a seller had these on eBay at 50% off. So I got both of these delivered. They're both 10s. Not that I care a ton about that, but I mean, I'll pay up slightly for a 10. Um, but it was like 25 delivered for both of these. Th it was really about this card here. Um, I love this set. I was collecting NASCAR cards in 96, and there's just something like, it doesn't really show here, but these have just... Uh, uh, like a unique shine that I don't recall re it's like a matte finish shine I guess is the best way I can describe it but always love these cards um, so when I was able to see a 10 and get it for 10 that was a uh, may as well so I got that and then this one is an acetate. I'm not as in love with this because this is post career. This is from 2012. Um, I'm not really a big fan of the post career stuff, other than maybe some of the relics I would like to pick up. But serial numbered 4.99. It's a 10. I paid 10. It was well worth it. 
Um, again, not anything I'm going to go super crazy on. I think I've picked up a couple of other low-end slab cards that I haven't shown off, but I couldn't remember if I had shown them or not, so I wasn't going to redo it. Last one I'm going to show you is number four. Even though he was number three, this is number four. This is the fourth autograph from Dale Earnhardt I've picked up. It is uncertified, but I've been looking at a lot of Dale Earnhardt autographs over the last six months. And I'm not cocky enough to think I know it all, but I feel good about this one. So someday down the road, this will be going over to Garrett Cardcutter for his uh, Slab City, and I will get this submitted. And I just I feel good about it. Um, I'm being overly cautious. I'm not looking to pick out many uncertified ones. But, again, just felt good on this one. So that is the fourth one that I have added to my collection. I paid much less than 50 for it that's on the back. I honestly hadn't even noticed that because, hell, I may not have even flipped the card over yet because obviously I was focused on the front. I did show off the, an autograph a couple weeks ago, I believe, that was uh, also uncertified. This was from the same seller. Uh, somebody, the auctions ended the same night and whoever had done this basically just didn't pay, canceled right after the auction. So I had to wait another week on this one and I've had it in my possession for about a week now but like I said I haven't done mail days so but anyway I'll show that you know some of you will still see me comment on videos I'm watching a lot less videos but I am still watching some so I'll be around but I just don't know uh, just not feeling things right now really so it is what it is and you know life goes on so i hope everyone is doing well i hope you all stay safe happy collecting y'all and if ever there was an appropriate video for me to say it it'll be this one i'll see you down the road